uh, hi everyone so uh, actually it's really late so I'm gonna turn in in a while but uh, I just wanted to make this really quick video about something that I just you know I just started thinking about because now you all know that uh, there are all this news of what's been happening right now um, in uh, Amsterdam uh, now with all that you know the program that was actually directed against uh, Israelis and Jews and you know one thing I know that people some people will be saying that oh they all brought it upon themselves I mean we hear different stories and there's fake news and everything so but uh, but 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 just take aside all this take aside just look just settle at the facts the fact is that there's all this there are all these instances of like re radical radical religious radicalism so and and the thing is that it's actually causing a lot of uh, pain destruction and everything and so this made me realize certain things because I've been thinking about it and I told my friend one thing I'm not just my friends but I don't, not just friends but even even people I know in like the gym there's one uncle whom I'm relatively on good to good terms with I told him you know that I actually believe this I believe that there is a very close tie between uh, religious fundamentalism or religious radicalism and extremism and and trauma okay why do i say that okay i'm 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 just i know it sounds very controversial for me to say that saying that you know like um it's it's not it's not like something that i mean i dare to i want to say to to kind of offend anyone but uh and i mean right now there were all there are all this uh all this research has been done uh stating that you know like uh religious fundamentalism causes brain damage in the prefrontal cortex the prefrontal cortex is the one that actually uh, regulates yeah it regulates you your emotions okay and so the actions and things that so it, it's a kind of like a you know the car kind of like it's something akin to the emergency brake when you we drive a car and just when you realize you're in danger you break you you just push the brake and the brake stops you from getting into an accident to hit someone or something but but the thing is this when the prefrontal cortex is actually being hindered or it's not growing or it's being damaged or shrunk whatever you will not do that okay you will not regulate your emotions so basically this is what religious fundamentalism does according to that research okay that is in uh was it neuropsychology the in the journal neuropsychology quite a number of years ago but uh this is actually the i mean it's of course it's a chicken egg, egg question so um, the, the the issue is that uh, according to all this, that religious fundamentalism causes damage to the brains. Okay, but uh, that said, what I was trying to say is that uh, it's it's a kind of reverse thing. If you think about it, I was thinking that maybe damage in the brain itself that has really preceded uh, conversion to religious extremism can actually. Uh, prime you yeah prime you for religious fundamentalism so uh, why do I say that um, you know that I know it's a very controversial thing to say especially right now in this a day and age where everyone's saying you know um, there's a tendency to sort of like claim that only religious uh, like religious extremists are only one small population but it's not always true okay uh, the more we internal of very often we internalize certain ideas which are extreme and I just I just can't I'm I'm not always able to wrap my head around this, but I'm just trying to do some research and read about it. In the meantime, while I'm actually doing my you know my teaching and everything, and uh, there is the the example of my that friend that former friend who was in uh who who still is in New Creation Church, which is a word of faith Pentecostal church, and she's very extremist in the sense that she she actually cuts off people when they present her with things which do not agree with the theology of her church and she regards us as heretics and people who are going to burn in hell and that is some that's something that that kind of like made me it struck my just struck me and i was like oh wait, wait 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 that kind of obsession with hell or the fear of hellfire that's always on her mind constantly telling me that she has had a dream of her late grandmother surrounded by a lake a ring of fire okay and then um asking her for help and then uh 
telling me that uh, hellfire is no good, that I should not convert to become an Eastern Orthodox Christian, I should remain evangelical, or uh, you know, all this BS, okay, that she's trying to do using fear. And it, it just kind of like made me realize, and the thing is that her father passed away from pancreatic cancer, although she keeps on denying it. She claims that her father passed away because of dementia. Dementia doesn't kill you. It's actually not dementia. It is actually cancer. And even at the last bit, she claimed, oh, you know that when he was converted, when he converted to Christianity, he had the aura of a newfound believer. Wait, 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 newborn believer. No, this is magical thinking. How do you know because he was suffering from dementia? Did he even tell you personally that he is com a convert now? Now he believes in Christianity? He didn't say that. She just assumed. And the funeral was not even done in Christian style. And it just made me realize, you know, the thing is this. People will, de they will deceive themselves into believing what they will deceive. Uh, they will want to believe in. It's a kind of cognitive dissonance. But... Um, for case, it's not cognitive dissonance alone. It's actually a form of like, you know, religious scrupulosity. The whole fear of hell, the fear of hellfire and punishment, thinking that they are like uh, spirits telling you, demons telling you to kill yourself, to unalive yourself. Um, yeah, to, to tell demons, believing that demons are telling you to hurt yourself and, and to unalive yourself. Uh, uh, I, I, I can I can sorry I can I can I can wrap my mind around this and I think it's really just a very irresponsible thing to yourself okay but there are, these are all signs of religious scrupulosity and I was thinking that you know like uh, maybe you can say some people say oh maybe it's her choice but it's not just her choice uh in a way her brains were already the the loss of her father the fear of what's going to happen, all these kind of emotions have led her to be easily manipulated by her pastor and by other people in church. And that in turn leads her to promulgate a form of religious extremism or fundamentalism that is based on fear and fear mongering. Um, I don't think that is healthy and I honestly, because I don't talk to her anymore, she cut me off. Uh, there's no need to even talk anymore, okay? Uh, she has to see a psychiatrist about this because I think that this is going to kill her one day. Uh, or not, not kill her, but this is not going to kill her, but not literally, but this is going to really mess up her life and make her really, really, really a bad person to deal with. Not just to other people, but even herself. She could, she's going to end up hating, hating herself, okay? Uh, I, I know that kind of feeling because, uh, you know, the whole feeling that thinking that after narcissistic abuse, thinking that I was a horrible person, that I was a bad person, this is something that the abuse will call, lead you to feel. But in this case, you, it's not abuse. It's, it's a more like she's abusing herself, okay? By actually putting herself through all these ideas. And it's not it's not very healthy. So I don't know what to say, but uh, I can say that we all need to really recognize these signs. And, you know, when do we know all these signs? It's a, of course, as I said, it's a chicken egg question. Did the thing actually cause her to do this or like the loss of a family, the greed, the trauma, or was it the other way around that it, that there was really a damage before that in the brain that left the process is grief this way. So we don't know which is which, but uh, there is, from what I see, there is an inextricable link between religious extremism and fundament, or fund, fundamentalism and trauma, okay, or grief that we process. So, if we are not aware of it, you know, we can't address it. We need to be aware of it, okay? So anyway, uh, that's it for now. I'm going to just uh, go and take my rest and sleep. Okay, have a good one, everyone. Okay, bye-bye.